three. Woohoo! Ow, ow, ow. Okay, this one is gonna be. <laughs> you guys probably didn't like the dance, huh? Yeah, I'm not much of a dancer. I'm not very good at it. I've never really practiced much though. I'm, I don't know if you guys knew this, but I was homeschooled my whole life pretty much. So, yeah, I didn't really have a real need to dance because I wasn't going to dances or social events too much until I just hung out with my friends and then went back and did my schoolwork and then went back out and hung out with friends. So I never really went to dances or whatever, so yeah. Anyway, that's off topic. So, today we're going to be talking about a bass pattern. Uh, it's called Alberti Bass, and you'll see it a lot in uh, music and whatnot. I'm going to find you some examples, and I'm going to show you how to play it and recognize it. And yeah, this will be helpful for uh, playing more advanced pieces and sort of getting an idea of what uh, left-hand accompaniment is. So, so what let's get is into it. an Alberti Bass pattern? Well, actually, the Alberti Bass pattern was named after a guy as Dominio or something like that, I can't pronounce it, Alberti. And he was born in 1710 and he died in 1740, so it's kind of only a 30 year life. It's pretty short, like I'm 21, that would be like me dying in nine years. I would not like that. Anyway, <laughs> so, um, so this guy, he actually didn't invent the pattern, that's the funny thing. He didn't invent it, but he used it so much that people just knew him by it. <laughs> now, I don't actually know who invented it. Uh, I guess I could try to look it up, but I mean, it's not too important. Because, I mean, who invented a rest and who invented this? It's not too much of a big deal who invented it. But that's why it's called an Alberti bass pattern. It sounds sort of random, right? So I just wanted to give that kind of chunk of information in there. So that's why it's called what it is. Now, what is it actually doing? Now, it's just a sort of an ornamented way of playing a, a chord. Like, say you're going to play like a C chord right here. Okay? You're just playing a C chord. Now, that's a lot more boring than if you're, if you're doing this, right? Something like that. Now, that's pretty boring, but if you do this, right? It starts to sound cooler. Now, what an Alberti bass pattern is, is basically like a broken chord. Alright, so what is an Alberti bass pattern? Interesting question. Okay, so, as I showed you just before when I was explaining it, basically what it is, is it's a, a solid chord with a little bit more var variety, basically. So all you're doing is you're taking your chord notes. Now, if you don't know how to do your chord notes, basically you just go up a third, like this, if you want to make a major chord, that is, but let's just use a major chord for that example. So this is what we're doing. Now, instead of playing it solid or doing this, that's, you know, sort of repetitive and boring, and it doesn't really give a whole lot of flavor to it. So this, think of this as like an exotic, uh, uh, an exotic spice or something like that. Now, what we'll do is uh, basically do this pattern. So we'll take the left side of the chord, or the bottom note, okay? Now we'll take the very top note of the chord, like that. So we go from bottom to top. That's the first part. Okay. Now the second part goes, you're already at the top, now you go to the middle and then back to the top. There you're done. That is an Alberti bass pattern in a nutshell right there. So what it what we're gonna do is go bottom, top, middle, top, bottom, top, middle, top, bottom, top, middle, top, bottom, top, middle, top. Just like that. Okay, pretty easy, right? Yeah, that's good. Now what you want to be able to do is you practice doing that so that you can basically do that. <laughs> kind of cool, huh? So you can use that Alberti bass pattern, change to your chords, you know. Something like that. 
So that's really, really simple right there. But see how it makes it sound like the notes are moving and it gives you kind of like a fluttering movement sound, like you're moving forward instead of like this. Just like that. <laughs> anyway, so Alberti bass is really cool to use. I mean, uh, Beethoven used it here. And so I have an example up here that we can use. Okay. Um, here. Do you see these notes right here? Whoops, not right there. Oh, those aren't even Alberti bass. Here we go, sorry. He's writing a whole bunch of different things. Like he's not just specifically writing Alberti bass, so we have to find it. So here, right here is perfect example of it. That is completely an Alberti bass pattern. Bottom, top, middle, top. And now he's gone to another chord here. So it's bottom, top, middle, top. Bottom, top, middle, top. And then he's done a couple octaves here. So that sounds like the kind of cool, huh? It's like changing. That's what it would be like. Now I can't play the right hand to that at the same time because I'm holding the camera. Although I could play it if I put the camera down, but I don't think it's really that important. Anyway, so all you're doing there is you're basically going. That'd be the left hand right there. But anyway, so see how it gives it sort of a flow and it kind of makes you, it builds excitement. So using this Alberti bass pattern, you can basically build excitement in your music. Now, how do we play it properly? Okay, so actually, hold on a second. <laughs> I just changed my mind. I want to show you guys something. Now, see here, this is your bottom bass note. Now, what is this going to do? This is an, in itself its own little voice here. See, look, watch this. If you play just the bottom notes here, it's going to actually make a melody. Watch this. Sorry. Now, if you're playing this, Typically, that actually wasn't the best bass line. Hmm. See right here. That would be good. Right there, there, there. Like, probably what you would do, dynamically how you'd want to play this, is you're going to make the bottom note and the middle note louder, and then these notes right here that repeat the softer ones. Now, if you remember back to rhythm before, it goes strong, weak, medium, weak, strong, weak, medium, weak. So if we follow that pattern, we're accenting the interesting notes, the ones that are moving. And um, when you're playing multiple voiced music, although this is more homophonic music, but in polyphonic writing, you want to be accenting the, basically the most interesting voice and anything that else is in isn't interesting, take it away. But it sort of applies to everything. Like, uh, okay, for an example, if listen, say you're listening to your favorite song by your favorite band, whatever it is. Like, say it's like, I don't know, Beautiful Day by U2 or something. Now, what would happen if all of a sudden this song starts up and you hear, It's a beautiful day, don't let it get away, right? <laughs> oh, don't you love my singing? Anyway, <laughs> I'm sure that's what you guys watch my videos for, is those random moments when I sing. But yeah, um... What if they had the singing, but it was super quiet, like really quiet. And then all of a sudden the drums are just like boo, 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 right? The drums are so loud that you can't even hear the song, like them singing or you can't hear the guitar. All you hear is just drum drums. Wouldn't you kind of be like, what is going on here? This is awful. I don't even like this. All I hear is drum beats. I mean, if you're a drummer, then you might appreciate that a bit more, but yeah. Anyway, so basically what I'm saying is the things that are important or the melodic, what we're going to do, music, for people to hear it, they need to basically hear the most important parts that stick out. It's sort of like, you know, highlighting, um, say you're trying to read something to a class and you're a student and you're trying to get a point across. So instead of giving them the whole novel to read, right, and making, saying that everything is important in it, you just highlight certain points that are really key and, that's, and bring them to their attention. So that's sort of what playing music, when you're a musician, 
uh, it's like most of your audience isn't going to really know as much as you do about this piece. So what you're going to have to do, it's your obligation to make what's really important obvious to them. So unless it's obvious to you when you hear it, like super obvious, so obvious that no one could possibly not notice it. That's when you know you're doing a good job with your voicing. Now, when I say obvious, I don't mean like bang it out so much that it just sounds awful because it all has to be still within taste. So you don't want to make everything super soft and super loud, right? Anyway, you still want some good contrast here. So whatever, so here, this note, the C should come out. Now, we don't want to do the C over and over because look, it just goes C, 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 C. And this isn't very interesting, is it? No, but this is kind of interesting, isn't it? trying to read this through the display <laughs> and then some, th some of the stuff on my screen is in the way. Anyway, but if you listen to it, it goes... See how that, it makes it more interesting versus like... Right? You don't want that. It's... Right? See how, see what I'm trying to say here? So you want to make those notes that would stick out in the melody kind of uh, come out. But yeah. Okay, so that is that. Now I'll show you how to play right, it. So next. to play an Alberti bass pattern properly, what you want to do is it's actually mostly in the central part of your wrist here. You want to put your hand in a general area where it's going to be in the middle of everything, and you're going to rock it back and forth just like this. Okay? So as you go... So let's take our pinky here and we're going to just move it over like this. Now maybe I'll just play that part from the, or no, I'll just do this for now, just to start off with. So we've got a nice rounded hand here. Now when I say rounded, I mean shake your hand out. Is it relaxed? And see how I have a natural curve to my hand. This is like, I'm stiff. This is me curling in. But when I just relax it, so I have a natural curve. That's what you want. Just natural. Just really relaxed. Okay, like I'm so relaxed it's not even funny. I don't even feel like my hand's like, it could be asleep and I'd be the same. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to rock back and forth. Now, have you guys ever turned a doorknob? I hope you have. I mean, yeah, how would you ever get around the house without a doorknob being turned? Unless you could just like slip through walls and stuff, and that'd be kind of cool. But kind of freaky at the same time, because I mean, what if like people are changing and then you like slip through the wall and they're like, ah! And you walk through the armor. That'd be weird. And what if you like appeared inside of a computer or something and then you like look down and the tower sticking out of your stomach and you're like, uh, hmm. I just got a RAM upgrade. Ha ha ha. Anyway. Sorry. <laughs> I just had to say that. Okay. <laughs> anyway. Okay, so keep yourselves relaxed here. Now. You want to move back and forth like this, just like that doorknob motion before it got on that side track there. So keep your finger curved and then push into it. Now see right here, you don't want to let your finger collapse. Okay? Don't let it ever do this. That's really bad. Because then you have, it's like trying to play with like, imagine trying to walk on stilts made out of rubber. Okay? That's not going to work. So you keep it nice and strong like that. Okay? Just like that. It's almost like you straight arm someone. You use the bones to keep them strong. Okay, so you play that. Now what you're going to do is you're going to lean over like this. Whoa. See, look, it's interactive. Now the camera's moving side to side. Hopefully that doesn't make you feel seasick. Because just watching it on the screen right now is making me kind of feel dizzy. Well, not really, but anyway. So you go from side to side, like this. Now that's one way where we can do this, right? Okay, so we're going to take one side here, move it over, play it on this part of our thumb here. Now as we do this, we're going to put our weight into the center part of our hand like this. And we're just going to, you know, we're not actually going to play it like this, right? And again, we don't want to do this. We're going to keep our finger nice and rigid, but at the same time relaxed. 
Once we've played the note, then we can relax, okay? We only, once the note is down, basically, you can relax. An exercise to do that is to play loud and then play soft immediately. Anyway, I need to work on that again. Okay, anyway. So, we're going from bottom to top, middle, top, bottom, top, middle, top, bottom, top, middle, top, bottom, top. If you're wondering, I'm just doing a, don a tonic chord to a, a subdominant chord, basically to a 5-7 dominant, but it's, you know, a 6-5 inversion, and then going back to the tonic. It's pretty easy. And then I'm just taking those notes and doing whatever's on the bottom, go to the top, go to the bottom note, go to the top note, go to the middle note, go to the top note. Now, the reason partly why you highlight the bottom note is because that's a strong beat. The strong beat of the four notes, right? Because one, two, three, four, now we've hit it again. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And also, when I do this, I'm actually starting my new chord. There, now I'm starting my new chord. So I'll show you in slow motion what I'm doing. I'm going C to G to E to G. And I'm going, now this is part of my new, this chord. Now, the key is here not to do huge motions like this. That'd be horrible. Like, this is just horrible, okay? Like, ah, ha, ha, ha. What we want to do is keep motions really small and controlled. Oh, that's so bad. Ah, I can't do it right now. Huh. Did you know I haven't practiced the piano in about five weeks? I haven't, I haven't really practiced, well, I haven't practiced it seriously. I haven't played for more than five minutes a day for the past like five weeks because I've been shooting so many lessons and I'm moving and I'm packing and lots of really busy but I should be practicing lots once I move because basically I'm going to be in a house with like master piano teacher so yeah <laughs> should be really fun I'm really looking forward to it very much so anyway I'm moving down to Vancouver BC so if you're in the area and uh, like you want to get in contact maybe get lessons or whatever just uh visit my forum or something and uh, let me know. Okay, anyway. Uh, what was I saying? Okay, yes. So it's basically bottom, top, middle, top, bot and then bottom, top, middle, top. Now when we do it, it's all in the arm basically. Let the arm lead, sort of. Just da 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 Wow, that's a really hard backwards. Da, da, da. <laughs> no, I can't do it. <laughs> anyway. Okay, so yeah. That is Alberti bass patterns. Now when you're doing a bigger one, basically you're just going to do the same motion. Just keep your hand relaxed. Now what you can do to practice them better is you can do uh, something called a fast slow pattern. So you can go go like this. And then. Okay, just like that. Now it doesn't sound like it'll make a difference, but it will, big time. Huge, huge, huge. And then you can also play them staccato. Just like that. Okay, so you can use that in any of your chords that you're making. Say you're making a piece and you just have your chord pattern, you know, you, you've got your harmonic structure already, and now you just want to make some spices. That's one of the tools you can do use to basically create a better or, you know, well-balanced song. Adding variety is never bad, right? So yeah, that's uh, something you can do about that. Anyway, so take care, guys.
and uh, you can there's so many different things that you'll find throughout music that uh, every little thing that you see always has something more to learn with it and actually what happens with piano is there's only a set number maybe you know about I don't really want to give a number maybe somewhere in the 20 to 50 range of different types of things that you have to know how to do you know like slurs and phrases and do a dotted rhythm and do a two against three and do all these little things and this thing that I just showed you here the Alberti bass pattern is just another one of them and as you learn each scale basically what happens is there's only a certain number of scales in the piano and once you master all those different separate scales then you start to encounter them in other pieces in the same spot and then you're like oh I already know how to do this and then it just comes back to you so the piece becomes easier to learn other pieces and those pieces and that's why concert pianists or whatever can just go over play something of a lower grade because they already know how each of those they already know those types of exercises or components inside and out already so they can just execute them properly and efficiently just on the spot so yeah anyway that's uh, the purpose this is basically this is just one more tool that you have at your disposal for uh, future study because Alberti bass patterns are awesome but anyway yeah take care